What's going on, guys? Welcome to Anchor TV Sports Report here. I'm Mike Giammarco. With me, as always, Jarrell James. And special guest today, the living legend, the Knight Rider, Nicholas Rose. Thank you for stopping by, Nick. Hey, I'm be here, boys. So we got a little bit to talk about today. Uh, the Rhode Island College Anchorman lost to Roger Williams University Hawks by a score of 6-2 on Friday night in a, in a home rival hockey game. Jarrell, give me your thoughts on that game, being from the penalty box. Actually, my first time being in the penalty box, I'm not going to lie. It was cold. However, what I heard from some of them kids was excellent. They had quite a, quite a bit to say. But um, about that whole thing, it seemed more like uh, it should have been closer than what it was. As far as being 2-6, it should have been more like 4-5 because they didn't count two um, Rick goals, and they, and they shouldn't have counted one of the um, – other goals, so one of the um, other opponents. Oh, the goals. goalie interference one, yes. Yeah, they shouldn't they shouldn't have counted that one. But I mean, what are you gonna do, huh? You can't go back in time. Absolutely, and you know, on the other side of it, I actually completely disagree with that. I think we were just all over the place. If you look at Roger Williams University, when they had their puck in the defensive zone, it would immediately be the in the offensive zone. It would just skip the blue lines in the neutral zone completely from uh, you know where center ice is. It would just get right into the offensive zone, and they had so many shots on goal, and there's nothing, nothing we can really do about that. You can't save every single one of them. I mean, six is quite a bit, but what can you do in those situations when the other team's just playing better, which has happened the last couple of weeks, to be honest. But um, you don't believe that those. Uh, I mean, you don't believe that they got one when they shouldn't have, and then Rick got Rick lost two when they should have. I agree. The one that went off of both sides of the crossbar that was over the line. Yep. That was for sure over the line. Another one. And the one for Roger Williams that was clearly goalie interference. He hit the goalie. Puck went in the goal, and they they gave it to them. It was I two. Mean, though. Was it on two? Rick's side. There was two mess, mess ups on Rick's side. And what was the other one? The other one was the same exact thing. Yeah. Like it hit the top. Oh, that That's one hit the top. It came out though. The, top the other one was in. That doesn't count. No, I believe that one. I believe that one counted. I'm not even gonna lie to you. That one should have counted because it went in past. It just went out. It went out. It went. I think it went in a strange way. Like right. even I, even though I think it hit the net, but I think it also hit something else too. Like I I I've seen it from the box, so I gotta look a little closer than you. But it was um, it was still, it was still pretty competitive the way it was hitting, because they were hitting. A couple, clo- yeah, a couple very close calls that could have been, could have gone either way, went the other way. Unfortunately, what can, what can you do? Uh, we'd have no game this Friday, but next Friday we will resume at home at the Dennis Lynch Arena in Pawtucket. New England Patriots yesterday defeating the Detroit Lions by a score of 34 to nine. Nick, give me your take on this. Well, when I saw this game yesterday, I would. It was seen like a nail biter a little bit because as the Lions were up like three nothing, right? And I thought, I thought that the Lions were were gonna be the better team that day. But uh, Tom Brady uh, going 38-53 for three hundred forty nine yards and two for two touchdowns and one interception. But yet the Lions only have. Uh, uh, they only scored nine points in that game. They didn't even score on that drive when they intercepted the ball from Tom Brady. Correct. So that brings them to nine and two. Now, ever since uh, they beat uh, uh, Cincinnati, uh, they've been on a seven-game winning streak. And co- oh, how the hell? on fire. Absolutely. But anyway, but now, when it comes to when it comes to the AFC playoff seedings right now. Uh, knowing if the season ended today, uh, then the Patriots would have had, not only they would have had a bye week, uh, but they will also have a home field advantage uh, throughout the playoffs if the season had a, would have had ended today. Hmm. But the good thing is that say, we have the Broncos right behind us at 8-3, yes. uh, but that's only one game. And then for Cincinnati, uh, I don't know. Basically, Cincinnati had that tie against Carolina. I believe what which week what was that? They got the um, they got the tie. That was, that was early in the week. That was like week week like four. Four or, or five, yeah. No, it was three, two, one. So that was week uh, six. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised uh, by that. You, you know, in Carolina, I don't know that was that field goal opportunity. I don't know who. Uh, I think it was like uh, Carolina who attempted yep. the, the field goal. I was kind of surprised they missed it. Right? It's ridiculous. But now you have uh, 
I know it's closely it's closely competitive right now yes. throughout the division leaders right now. Absolutely. But the Patriots have uh, the Patriots are nine and two. Yeah. Uh, they're number one right now, and then Denver at eight and three, uh, and then uh, Cincinnati at seven three and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have uh, Indianapolis at seven and four, and Correct. the. And the good thing about it is, even though that we're even though we're like tied with all of them after that, right? We we after the Patriots have the tiebreaker over all of that. Absolutely, yeah. My prediction: we're gonna be we'll be the number one seed, so, no doubt in my mind. We're gonna have the number one seed. We'll either go fourteen and two or thirteen and three. We're, we'll lose well, one we got we got sat we got settle for fourteen and two or fourteen and three. No, thir- 13, thirteen and three. three. We got actually right, settle for that. Yeah. Um, question, fellas. Go ahead. Would you say this win? I mean, the Patriots seem like they were going to win. I mean, I actually, I'm not a fan of the Patriots. Right. But I did think they were going to beat the um, Lions. Let me ask you a question. Did, did the Patriots win because, like, they were the better team? Or was it because Detroit has no offense? Because we've seen the past few games, they have not scored a touchdown. They didn't have the points to beat. And you know when Brady's on it, it's a guaranteed two touchdown passes. Right. So, but, but look at... Detroit's defense, they're the number one ranked defense in the NFL. Right. We scored 34 points on them. Hmm. I mean, I think that that seems to, that seems Corey, to tell the story. And according to the Culver line, the Patriots were favored by seven over the Lions. But okay. hey, guess what? We're being by 25 points. Right. But um, like I was saying, it's like they have no offense. So you can throw it out the window and the defense is on all day. I mean, they're going to get tired. I don't think they have no offense. They have Golden Tate. They have uh, who else? They have Calvin Johnson. Yeah, Megatron. He's known as Megatron. 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 Yeah, going up against Revis Island yesterday. Oh, Megatron had no chance against Revis Island. Revis has to be one of the greatest corners in the NFL. Absolutely. Even though the Jets got rid of him. Right right behind behind Champ Bailey. Wait. And Ty uh, Law. Emmett Smith. uh, Damn it. No. Evan Smith was the running back. Deion Sanders, sorry. Okay. That man. Right, I think right behind him is um, Revis. But then there's, uh, you know, Champ Bailey. Of course, I have to put Ty Wall in there. Oh, being scratch the, that. Scratch being that. the homer that I am. Scratch that. Joe Hayden is number All right. two. Joe Hayden's number two. I'm sorry. Darrell Revis, they're great, but you ain't no Joe Hayden. Insane. Insane. No, I disagree. And we got to give credit to Brennan. Brennan Brown are shutting down Golden Tate, too, yesterday. Oh, yeah. You disagree? You think um, Revis is better than um, Joe Hayden? Uh, look, look, he was able to shut down every single wide receiver throughout all those games, including A.J. Green. Yeah. And, and Megatron, Calvin Johnson. Who's that? Uh, Darrell Revis. Oh, come on. Yeah, Darrell Revis. Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying Darrell Revis isn't good. Darrell Revis is third, but, I mean. Of if all you look time. At, third of all time. Yeah. But um, if you look at um Joe Hayden, what he's done, what team's he on? He's on the Browns. Okay. No, wait, 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 wait let me Browns? check that. Who's on the Browns? Nobody good. There's nobody good on the There's Browns. There's nobody good on the Browns. But, but yeah, Cleveland beat Cincinnati uh, uh, during the Joe season. Joe Hayden made A.J. Green, A.J. Green his woman. He straight, that's true. like, yeah, that's true. dominated A.J. Green. Well, even though, the, even though the Browns and the Bengals both have orange, but the difference is yeah, we'll that... No, no. The difference is that that Cleveland has a burnt uh, orange. You, you see, like the lighter, like, the lighter shade of uh, yep, yep. A, of orange on their on their helmets, and yep. then and then look at the Bengals. They just they have like a darker, right. like a darker orange, like a regular orange. <laughs> Seem to say. I think that the Cleveland Browns have some kind of curse. You look at Brady Quinn, Peyton Hillis, now Johnny Manziel, all no, <laughs> all Noah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Nobody could come in from there. And as we look at the Patriots, next week we have Green Bay at Green Bay, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have we have mm-hmm. them at Green Bay next week. Which, it's Rogers, gonna be a tough game. Big boy Rogers. That I think we can come away with it, but it's gonna be close. I'd say New England wins by ten to fourteen points. I'm gonna have to disagree. All right, what I do you believe say? it's a high scoring game with okay. uh, um what is it? Um I believe um, shoot. Uh, Green Bay is going to win. All right. 30 to 24. I believe that's going to be a pretty high scoring game. I mean, well, I'm, also, that, I'm, I'm, taking, the, I'm taking the Patriots got, uh, this got, week. So, what, is, what do you think the score will be? 
Oh, I'm probably going to have to say 45-21. 45-21 New England. Wow. In Green Bay? Lambeau in Green, Field? In, in Green Bay at Lambeau Field. What? Bold prediction right there. That is And bold. I say... You got, your, you got your money on New England, though. I got my money on New England, yes. But I think we'll win from anywhere from 10 to 14 points. So I say 35-21. See, I would have but you got you got to take the Pagers defense uh, into account because absolutely because last year right we never made the super the Pagers never made the Super Bowl but this year I I believe that the Pagers got a chance at making the Super Bowl oh yeah, yeah no doubt about it we have the best the best secondary we've had since two thousand five two thousand four two thousand five when back there who was back there. Rodney Harrison was back there. Eugene Wilson, Asante Samuel. This has been the best secondary since then. Hey guys, no fun, doubt about yeah. it. Guys, fun fact: Ty Law takes his daughter to ballet in Pawtucket. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> yes. I mean, my, my brother and him talk every almost all the time. Really? Yeah. His daughter, his daughter's um, a ballerina in uh. Wow. In Pawtucket, it's ridiculous. Right? I met him once too. Very nice guy. Class act completely. Yeah. Him and uh and Ty Law too. Yeah. Uh, Ty Law, you just said that. And Lawyer Malloy, I'm Lawyer, sorry. Lawyer Malloy, another funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> Lawyer Malloy is related to my family down south. Really? Yeah. He's well, a, there we have it. He's like, he's a, no, I mean, I think it's so far back that he's not related to me, but he's related to yeah. family of mine. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So that's another fun fact. Well, thank you very much. This has been Anchor TV. Mike Giamarco alongside Jarrell James and Nick Rose. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.